Let's make it a good day. Coming up today, find out the drama and details behind the shutdown of CBS's The Talk and why Sharon Osbourne is in the middle of the storm. Plus, make your own cleaning solutions that will save you money and make spring cleaning a breeze with Aaron Meyer from Lemons, Lavender, and Laundry. And what are clean wines? Wine diva Leslie Miller is answering the most asked questions about vino. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Good morning, Daytona Beach, Orlando, Clearwater, and Ta oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm back in Minnesota. Hello, Coon Rapids. Hello, Andover, and welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Please say hello to my sidekick sister from another mister and Dairy Queen's Employee of the Month for February, Kendall Mark, everyone. Good morning, Kendall. Good morning, Jason. Oh, how I missed you. I missed you too. You're so much tanner than me. And I used a lot of self tanner knowing this last night. I'm very sorry. I used the good old fashioned sun. I know I am. I'm very tan. I'm back. I'm, I'm back from a, a family vacation in, uh, in the Sunshine State. And yeah, I, I laid out maybe a little too much yesterday uh, under the suit. I look like you should uh, crack me and put me in some drawn butter. Oh, really? Does it hurt? I'm in a lot of pain right now, Kendall. I, that's why I, I'm gonna move like that, just just a little bit. Just just. Oh, that hurts. That's all I'm gonna do. Oh, that's the worst. Anyway, hey, I want to start off. Uh, Phil Jones gave me a good reminder, and uh, I, I want to say thank you to you and Shane. You guys did wonderful, uh, and I, I greatly appreciate it. Everyone loved you, and uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It was fun. We missed you. Yep. Well, I missed you. Yeah. Let's say hello to our audience today, and one of them is family. First uh, to the right, there's my girl, it's Karen. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Jason, I miss you. Oh, Karen, not as much. Now, uh, people should know, Karen and I have a bond. She's my friend, She, uh, I love her. She's here with us when we can have an audience. She's family, and I can't wait to have you back in the studio, Karen. I can't wait to get back there, Jason. And uh, she is a new member of our family. It's Kirsten, hi, Kirsten. Kirsten, hi. Hi, where are you? Uh, where are you zooming in from? I'm in Prescott, Wisconsin. Oh, well, thank you. We love when um, Wisconsin represents here. Well, the ladies will be sticking around throughout the show. Thank you very much. We'll get back to them in a little bit. But yeah, I was uh, I, I was in Florida, and you know, one of the other things I do, I talk about uh, uh, amusement parks and Disney and stuff, and, and another thing that I do. And so I I went to Universal Studios in mm -hmm. one of the days for that mm -hmm. for that thing. And I got a little video for you guys. Let's go ahead and roll it, uh, Leo. This is a look at the brand new Jurassic Park roller coaster called the Velocicoaster. Mm -hmm. uh, when we were there, they were testing it. It's not open to human beings yet. In just a few seconds, you'll see uh, one of the test cars go around that loop. There are several inversions. Here it goes right there. There's the car. You'll see it go down. Oh, and my what's, word. Now, what's crazy, everyone look really close at your screen. Look at the bottom. Yeah, I kind of zoom in. Look how close that track is to the water. And when the car goes, it inverts. And you look like when you're upside down, it looks like you're basically in the water. Uh, it opens uh, in a few months there at Universal Studios Orlando. And you saw Harry Potter land uh, behind there. So, yeah, it was oh awesome. Gosh. It was it awesome. So cool. Even the music just makes me happy. Yeah. Because you can hear all that Jurassic Park music in there yeah. too. And I will say, look, uh, I, I want to say we did this safely. You know, the family that I went with, we've either uh, had the COVID or have, uh, or because of occupation, people have been vaccinated and we were with little kids. I just want to let everyone to know uh, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't safe. So, and I'll be sprinkling some stories uh, throughout uh, the week. I was telling our producer, Jeff, I, I have a travel advisory. Uh, if you plan on when people feel comfortable traveling again, if you start feeling comfortable, I have a travel advisory. If you rent a house hmm. uh, like in Florida, I'll tell you about that later in the week. We learned some lessons. Oh, let me tell you. I learned a lot of lessons on this trip. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hotness. Roll it, Leo. <laughs> what? You look so good. So tan. Thank so you. Healthy. I appreciate it. I know oh. the hair is getting long, too. I haven't had this long a hair uh, since Jeff uh, was in diapers. 
Oh! I know. How exciting! That was just a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I missed picking on Jeff. I did. I know. First up, a big morning in Hollywood as nominations are announced for the 93rd annual uh, Oscars. Nick Jonas wearing a gold sport coat. <laughs> wow. Wow. He wins the Oscar for brightest coat. And his wife, Priyanka Chopra, who looked dazzling, Jonas announced all the nominations in London this morning. With most people not seeing movies in theaters for the past year, it is a much different Academy Awards. Here's a look at the eight movies up for Best Picture. Here we are. And the nominees are The Father, starring Anthony Hopkins, Judas and the Black Messiah, Mank, uh, Minari, and Nomadland. Uh, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, and The Trial of the Chicago 7. Mank leads the way with 10 nominations. Six other movies got six nominations. History shows, this is my favorite fun fact uh, about the Oscars. History mm -hmm. shows the movie with the most nominations typically wins Best Picture. Not always the case. Hmm. I'm here to tell you, haven't seen any of those. Me neither, Jason. Haven't seen a one. Fun. And I've been covering entertainment for 20, well, since Jeff was in diapers. Yeah. Haven't seen, this is the first year. I mean, hello, we had a, we had a, uh, we had a, a pandemic. A, pand going, a global pandemic know. was happening in was our defense. On. But I haven't seen a, I haven't seen a single one of those movies. And can I say too, I, I ran the nominations live on the radio show. Mm -hmm. The nominations took 47 hours. They listed Seriously? every cat. Usually they just do the big nominations yeah. in the morning. Mm -hmm. They listed off everything during the radio show. I was like, oh lord. Oh, like the ones that they usually do a day before, yeah, and like then best we get the craft service of it. Yeah. You know, best craft yeah. service. Yeah. Best garbage can on a set. They did them all. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. Well, and a few movies I loved are up for Oscars. I actually did see a few. My Octopus Teacher on Netflix was nominated for Best Documentary Feature. And the Disney Pixar movie Soul, directed by Minnesota native Pete Doctor, is up for Best Animated Feature. Love both of those. Have you, Kendall, I can't remember. Have you seen Soul? I have not. Oh, it's I've so actually good. only seen, the only movie I've seen that is up for a nomination is Mulan. <laughs> the only one I've seen. That's, That's fine. so sad. Yeah, Mulan uh, for costume design. Yeah, it was that and I think one other. One other category, yeah. But oh, Soul is so good and I obviously love a good Disney movie. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best. It has such a good message. It has such a great message. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I gotta, now I just got to watch some of these movies. I, I feel so out of it. I know. I've been really wanting to watch The Trial of the Chicago 7. Me too. And The Octopus Teacher, but from what you've said and from what I've heard, it's a beautiful movie. I just don't know it's if like, emotionally I'm ready for the sad level. No, be, uh, <laughs> already be in a sad mood so the movie won't make you because you'll cry. I just don't. Yeah. It's just a, like people do in this show. They cry eventually. Every hour people different cry. Different kinds of tears. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, from movies to music, the Grammy Awards took place last night and the show was dominated by women. Yeah. First, Taylor Swift makes history. Look at this. And the Grammy goes to... Folklore, Taylor Swift! Swift won Album of the Year for her album Folklore. She's now the first woman to win the category three different times. In her speech, T. Swift thanked her boyfriend Joe, who uh, she says is the first person to hear every song she writes. Yeah, that's nice. Not to be outdone. Hello, Beyonce made history herself. She won four Grammys last night, including R&B performance. That brings her career total to 20. Look at her. Look at her. Oh. I, I, magnificent. Oh. That brings her Grammy total to 28, the most for a singer. She's now tied with producer Quincy Jones at number two on the all-time list. Congratulations. And a Blue Ivy won a Grammy. I know. Yes. Anyway, uh, other big winners include Megan the Stallion, Billie Eilish, and Harry Styles. He won for Best Chest at an award show. And Feather Boa. Feather Boa. Mm -hmm. I asked Jeff if we could do the show in Feather Boas. Was, I was denied that. Oh, that would have been so fun. I know. The Blue Ivy, Beyonce, the child won a Grammy. The protege, she and Jay-Z, I mean, what do you expect? How old is she, Jeff? How old is Blue Ivy? Seven like under 10. What were, what were you doing at seven or eight? I was getting grounded. I was Blue learning, Ivy's winning Grammys. Yeah, I was learning not to pick your nose and eat your boogers. Okay. Oh, I just got to know. You, yeah. Sorry. Okay, let's go to the audience. <laughs> did either of you uh, Did either of you watch the Grammys? Karen? I watched some of it, not all of it. <laughs> Kristen's a big no. <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I thought? This is what I thought. I watched uh, some clips, and it was one of those things where 
it made me feel old. Like I, it was like when I watch MTV now, I'm past the age where I know like half of the performers. Yeah. Oh yeah, yep. that's the right <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Thanks ladies. Just next, saying. yeah, next up an unexpected break for the daytime show, The Talk. CBS canceled shows for today and tomorrow. The decision comes after the network launched an investigation into, I, I, wow, into a very tense exchange between Sharon Osbourne and Cheryl Underwood. Now, Osbourne became upset when Underwood accused, or questioned Sharon, rather, uh, questioned her defense of Piers Morgan, because Piers and Sharon are friends, over his comments about Meghan Markle. Sharon apologized on Twitter, saying she felt blindsided and that because of that, she got defensive. She also blamed CBS for allegedly not telling her that peers would be brought up in their Hot topic segment. How could you not? Okay, even if you were blindsided, let me just say this. On the day that aired, that was the bit, I mean, I missed the whole Megan Oprah last mm -hmm. week. I had a lot to say. I had a lot to say on that, on vacation. I was walking around the house. Telling everybody. <laughs> Talking to my opinion. Anyway, um, but come on. You do a show about hot topics and you don't know, you do, you're not going to talk about Piers Morgan? I know. I don't, I, so that, I, I, and I, let me say this. I like, I like Sharon. I think, you know, I liked her on the Osbournes. Mm -hmm. But that, that exchange, uh, to say it was uncomfortable, to say it was problematic is an understatement. To say to Cheryl, I should be crying and not you. Ooh, I, I didn't like that at all. Mm -hmm. I did, did you watch the, the exchange? Yeah, Shane and I talked about it and we had the same take that was like, we've all had a situation where we've felt defensive and you can get hot and yes. bothered, but the way she handled it was not okay or appropriate. Yeah, we've all, I love these, we all get defensive, but that was just talking about racism and telling the black woman on your colleague mm -hmm. that she can't cry, that you should be crying. I, I didn't, I did not, what? I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Lots more to come, everybody. We'll be back right after this. The hot dish is far from over. Coming up next, are they together or not? TMZ has the latest on JLo and A-Rod. They'll try, try to set the record straight. Then, unruly spice drawers. We all have one. Aaron Meyer is back with an easy plan to get your spice cabinet organized. And Leslie Miller is answering your wine questions today, like what to look for when buying any type of wine. She'll join us live with the answers. That and more when The Jason Show continues. Come and knock on our door. Come and knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. Where the kisses are hers and hers and his. Three's company too. You know we love a good throwback. Monday flashback for you. 44 years ago. Oh my God, they spilled water on me. 44 years ago today, Three's Company made its debut on ABC. Look at Mrs. Roper. Nobody wears a moo moo like Mrs. Roper. Oh, I love Audra. Anyway, uh, despite low expectations, the show became the highest rated mid season show ever on broadcast TV, going on to run for eight seasons. And uh, mid season, yeah, if you're that? not a nerd like me, most shows back in the day used to debut in the fall, mm -hmm. fall TV season in September. Mid season is January. Oh, okay. And usually those are the shows where the network's like, oh, we don't really have a lot of faith in that. Let's put it in January. <laughs> Uh, it went on. I'll talk, you know what, let's do TMZ. I, uh, uh, Three's company made history for so many reasons, and we'll talk about it a little bit. But right now, welcome back. More Hot Dish. Are they broken up? Are they still together? More speculation this morning about the engagement between Jennifer Lopez and Alice, Ali, Alice, speaking of a sitcom, <laughs> Alex Rodriguez. Joining me live from Hollywood with that story and more is our friend Brad from TMZ. Hi, Brad. Hey, good morning, Jason. How are you? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Okay, Brad, it's a lot of pressure. We're depending on you. You, you set the record straight. What's going on with these two crazy kids? So I'm going to do my best to give you a little bit of a timeline, Jason. Okay. Uh, it was on Friday uh, when we learned that the two had split. Now, we spoke with a source very close uh, to the couple, as well as so did other outlets uh, who all reported the same thing, that the couple, they had called off their engagement and they were no longer together. Now, if Fast forward to Saturday morning, 
uh, when the two gave us a statement saying that they were still together and trying to work through some things. Now, we spoke to other sources who said, look, Friday was a bad day for the couple. Possible there was some sort of blow up fight and maybe one one side made a decision that the other wasn't too happy about uh, and they were going to work things out. Now, we also got video of A-Rod in Miami on on Saturday uh, where he said that he wasn't single. So it appears uh, that at least for now, the two of them are still together, but a uh, lot of questions still if that means that the engagement is still on or if they're just together as a couple and trying to work through some things. Yeah, and then I heard possibly it was because A-Rod was connected to like a Bravo star or something. I, I don't know. I, I, so yeah. that's, that's something that's been floating around, and the people who we spoke to said, look, this incident or whatever happened that they're working through does not involve a third party. So that seems to kind of get rid of that theory. Now, that's not to say that it wasn't an issue, uh, but at least wasn't a reason uh, for a split. Brad, don't you don't you love the technical term third party? They just you know, know. the third know. party it's, involved. Yeah. <laughs> I think you and I would call it cheating, but exactly. uh, third yeah. party is definitely the highbrow way to put it. Uh huh. Next, we're learning about some break-ins at the uh, California home of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. What's up with this? Well, it kind of makes a little more sense uh, because during the Oprah interview, Prince Harry really got upset. You could tell when he was talking about how the palace had taken away his security because, as he said, he said, "Look." My, my title may be changed, but the threats to my life certainly didn't. Now, we did a little digging and found out that actually uh, just the day before Christmas, on Christmas Eve, there was an intruder on their Montecito property, and the same person came back on December 26. He was arrested uh, and had driven all the way from Ohio out to, uh, to get to their home. So definitely some scary stuff and kind of puts it into perspective as to why he was so upset when he was detailing the security concerns uh, with Oprah. Yeah, I, I don't I, I didn't get the criticism of people saying he was quote unquote whining about it. I mean, he's protecting his wife and kid for heaven's sake. And he's yeah, anyway, uh, finally, uh, just a nutter butter story out of a hospital in Michigan with surgeons allegedly playing games during a surgery. What, what's this? Not only that, Jason, they're playing games and posting it on social media. Uh, there is uh, some doctors being investigated in Michigan, some surgeons, uh, because they were playing essentially Price is Right-esque games where they would uh, decide maybe if one organ's weight that they had removed from a patient and I they hold it up and, uh, and they say Price is Right style. So if you go over uh, the, the, the actual weight, uh, you're disqualified. But it's just stuff like that, that they've been posting. You know, we spoke to some, some, some medical professionals who say, look, the reality is this does happen. Surgeons do do this where they just kind of do it amongst colleagues. But to put it on social media, especially when patients are sometimes in the room under anesthesia, you've got to think that that's criminal or negligent or something. I don't want them playing Plinko and holding my spleen. <laughs> you know, I'd like to see how Plinko works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just have the little spleen go down the board. Anyway, right. Brad, thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jason. More on these stories at TMZ.com. No, that's horrifying. I can't, like, pick my job off the I, floor. That's just, can you imagine? No. Okay, well, I guess the weight of this kidney. Eh, oh, you went over the actual retail price. Oh. <laughs> they told me during one of my surgeries on my knee that I could stay awake if I wanted to, that they just do, like, a general anesthetic down there. And I was like, are you serious? I, I don't want to watch you performing surgery on my body part and, I like, I did it once. You I did? Little, yeah, a little lipo on the belly. You watched? Yeah, I, well, I was awake and I watched Dallas on the iPad while they were doing it. <gasps> yeah. Season four, episode three. Stop, you'll never watch it the same way, oh, though. Oh, it was the Oil Bearns Ball episode. I'm like, oh, look, do, 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 do. There they go, just getting rid of the, making me a <laughs> sus 34 waist. I was like, oh. it was many years ago. Oh my gosh. Yep, blew you away at that one, didn't I? I just, I'm like, whoa. I have no filter today, I don't care. No? Mm -mm. Next up, a movie I can't wait to see, a documentary about the life of music icon Tina Turner. A new uh, trailer is revealing more, including Tina talking about escaping the abuse of Ike. Look at this. I had an abusive life. There's no other way to tell the story. Ooh. Buddhism was a way out. Ooh. I started really seeing that I had to make a change. 
the divorce, I got nothing. No money, no house. So I said, I'll just take my name. And then we tried to get a record deal. Nobody would touch Tina Turner. She'd play anywhere just to make the money to get by. My dream is to be the first black rock and roll singer to pack places like the Stones. And she did it. The movie follows the personal and professional highs and lows that Tina faced in her legendary career. Tina premieres on HBO and HBO Max March 27th. Mm. I will be watching. My affinity for Tina is well known if you watch the show. I won't repeat my stories, but uh, I, I, you think about what she walked away from, and she's not joking. She had nothing. There's a scene in that Angela Bassett did, oh, and what's love got to do with it, which is one of the best biopics where Tina escapes the hotel. She's had it. And she walks out with literally her name and the clothes on her back. It gives new meaning to that phrase that we hear a thousand times. Wow. Brave. Uh, you, you, you pick an adjective to describe a woman, to describe a human being, they, uh, they're all applicable to Tina Turner. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the audience. Karen, I saw you reacting. How excited are we for that documentary? Oh, very excited. I love Tina Turner. Karen, you know, I, I, was, I was a domestic abuse advocate, so I'm there for her. Absolutely. I mean, it's just unbelievable what, what she went through. And perseverance is another one of those words. Kirsten, have you ever seen her live by chance? No. <laughs> oh. No. It's one of those concerts that I, I often refer to as being one of the best. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, I, I, anyone that hasn't seen her, I just, I feel bad because it was an experience. Yeah, yeah, I think these kind of things too are cool for people of my age even who maybe didn't see the originals, but you see like how splendid she was in her prime then too. And it's just, it, I'm really interested. Strong women, man. We celebrate them every day. Well, speaking of that, I, I mentioned it earlier with uh, Three's Company. Yeah, yes, Goof, yes. Goofy show, but, uh, and laugh at thigh master lady if you want, but no one, you know, uh, no one's laughing at her now. Suzanne Summers, and I'll make this quick, Suzanne Summers was another phrase, uh, another cliche, way, way ahead of her time. That show was number one, making millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars for ABC. John Ritter was uh, the highest paid actor on that show. Mm -hmm. And in like the fourth season, Suzanne went in to renegotiate and said, you know, uh, looked at the two co-stars and said, we should go in there together and negotiate as a team. And they didn't want to. John didn't want to. And Joyce DeWitt. Uh, Janet didn't want to. So Suzanne went into ABC and said, You're, I'm on every magazine cover. Uh, my Q rating, which is a popularity rating, is through the roof. I'm the most, uh, I'm the most visible woman in primetime. I want to raise. And they fired her. And they treated her like trash. They, they allowed her to finish out the season, but they made her film in another set. They wouldn't allow her on the set. Uh, they wouldn't allow her to contact the, the castmates. It was horrible. Ew. Google, Google Suzanne Summers and now look at it. Mm -hmm. Now she's ahead of her time. Mm -hmm. We got uh, so much more to come. Getting organized for spring. Aaron Meyer from Lemons Lavender and Laundry is back with an easy way to organize your spice drawer. That's right. Plus how to make your own goo, goo remover for price tags, labels, and more. We're removing goo when we come back. Back in a moment, everybody. Stay with us. Oh, and... What to know about clean and natural wines that could save you money? Can't forget about Leslie Miller. She's coming up too. We'll be back. Now we'll go to commercial. I'll learn how to do this before the end. Monday, Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. Welcome back. With spring approaching, many of us, is it spring here? Is it here? Not yet? Kinda, sorta? Okay. With spring almost here, many of us, uh, probably have some cleaning or organizing tasks ahead of us. Our next guest can help make those tasks a little easier. Welcome back. One of our favorites, our good friend, Aaron Meyer from Lemons, Lavender and Laundry. Hello, Aaron. Hello. How are you? Aaron, you know, when we were conceiving this show uh, five years ago, I never thought that we would be doing a segment about organizing a spice cabinet. But darn it. Not only are we doing it, but I'm excited about it because this is what I call a relatable. This is, an ep this is a problem, Aaron, right? This is a problem for all of us. Okay, yes. Well, my spice drawer was 
very disorganized. So, <laughs> and I, I feel like many people have that issue, right? Yeah. And you're doing, and this is part of your 52 smaller projects a year. Uh, and this, are, yes. are, are, are we looking at your spice uh, cabinet right now? Yeah, isn't that pretty? That's the before, obviously. <laughs> it looks well organized, Aaron. Not, not really, but anyway. Kind of like Tetris. Exactly. Okay, so what do we need? What do we need for this project? Okay, so the very first thing that you want to do, obviously, is go through your spices and throw out ones that you've never used or that expired like 15 years ago. Um, and then... Uh, I went ahead, I like cohesive storage. So I went ahead and got, I had a bunch of those glass um, storage containers for my spices. I did buy a couple more off of Amazon just because I didn't have quite enough. And so you just kind of do that. If you are reusing your jars, we will talk about this DIY goo remover that worked awesome at getting all the sticky stuff off when once you peel the labels off. Um, and then I used labels that I already had. And what's really nice is if you use Avery labels online, they have a, they have free templates. And so I went ahead and used those, um, and then just went ahead and like created my spice labels, wrapped some packing tape around it to keep it waterproof and oil resistant. Yeah. And then, um, and then I put the expiration date on the bottom with a different little label because you once you put them into a kind of clear jar, you just really don't know what you're going to end up with. And then I also, um, our spice drawer ha is obviously when you lay everything flat, the little spices can come up through the holes of the lid, you know. And so every time I would open the lid to use the spice, I would get a bunch of spices that would fall out. So we propped it up. I just put like a little um, strip of wood in the drawers. I use double-sided tape. I don't know if it'll hold long-term to be completely honest, but it works uh, I'm now. hoping it will. I know it's working for the moment. So what I'm, so then it just kind of props up the spice a little bit so that it's not up in the top where it can fall out. Okay. And so we ended, so then I just, I put them in alphabetical order. We'll see um, like how long does that last? I don't really know, but for now they are nice and they're organized and they're alphabetized and all the storage containers are the same. All the labels are the same. So, so, so again, just to recap, so the steps. First, elevate yeah. the spices, then use to make co a, a cohesive storage unit, use the same labels, label mm -hmm. the spices, then wrap tape around the label. We saw that. Yeah. Then get the, create those wood inserts because you do not want the spices to lie flat for the very reason you said. And yeah. then uh, now we right there, there it is right there. Okay. That's kind of just showing yeah how they're laid in there so they can kind of see they're propped on those little pieces of wood. Perfect. Okay. So now we have the final look. Look at that. Doesn't that, that look so much better? <laughs> that looks like Martha Stewart's house, Aaron, if I'm being honest right there. Wow, what a compliment. Well, I'm just telling you, yeah, it's very I, Martha Stewart. I feel like every time you open the drawer, then you're like, oh, that just it just feels so much better. It's not my Tetris. That's Here, not, here's know. the yeah. Here's the before and after, everybody. Okay, Aaron, uh, be honest. How did you find some like really old spices up in there? Okay, I would say about five years ago, I went through our spices. But let me tell you that you know, is it? Does everyone get a spice rack when they get married? Yes, everyone. I, okay, and they they come with the spices. So. I will say about 15 years into my marriage, I went through the spice rack I got for our wedding. And there were at least two that come right to my head that I know I never, I never used it, not even one time. So yeah. I tossed those. Yeah, I had basil from when George H.W. Bush was president. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't good anymore, Aaron. I know that shocks yeah, you. It's kind of toss those. You know, they do say the, the expiration date is really the best buy date, right? I, I'm not sure how long, but it, it is going to start losing its flavor and yeah. maybe clumping. I yeah. don't know. You well, might not want to use them after the no. best buy date. No, we love that. But Erin isn't done yet. She's sticking around after the break. How to make your own 
Goo Remover. This is a big one. Life changing when we come back. Goo Removal. Never done it before here on the show when we return. Welcome back. Uh, now that our spice drawer is organized, it's time to do some cleaning. Aaron Meyer from Lemons Lavender and Laundry is back with us. Okay, so we've organized the spice rack, and now, and I think we're going to change lives here. We're going to talk about making our own goo remover, right, Aaron? Our our yes. own. Yes. Now, first, we have a little graphic here. What do we need, okay. Aaron, to make this? So. My inspiration for this was my spice jar because I did not want to have to take all the spices out of the jar. Because if you use store bought goo remover, it has like petroleum stuff in it and it's all these warnings not to use it around food. So I was like, I don't want to take all the spices out and have to figure out which was which. So I decided to try my own. It's all natural ingredients. So if, you know, I didn't have to remove all the spices. So what you need is baking soda fractionated coconut oil. So fractionated coconut oil is liquid at room temperature versus actual coconut oil will be a solid. So you want to make sure you have the liquid and then um, you'll need a couple drops of any type of citrus essential oil. You can use lemon or orange or whatever it is that you happen to have on hand. Grapefruit, it doesn't. It's so just one of the citrus essential Baking oils. soda, it's right there on the screen, everybody. Baking soda, Fractionated coconut oil, a few drops of citrus essential oil. Okay, so how does this work? Okay, so you're basically you're gonna take your two parts baking soda. When I need it, I did little batches because I didn't know how much I would end up needing for all these spice jars. But um, I just took one part baking soda, mixed in the or sorry, two parts baking soda, mixed in the one part coconut oil, added in about three drops of citrus oil, just gave it a stir. And then I just put a little scoop onto the spice jars and just kind of rubbed it in with my finger, let it sit for, I don't know, a minute or two, and then used a paper towel to rub it off. And you just kind of go in circular motions and you want to concentrate on the part that had that sticky part. Probably want to do it over a trash can because the baking soda kind of falls, but it it worked so well. I love when you have things that are all natural stuff you have in your pantry and it works just as well as the store bought for sure. Well, and can I tell you, and I love them, but the Target boutique, uh, the Target is the worst. You'll buy a mirror. And can I ask the stores, why do you put price tags on mirrors? I mean, can you put it on the frame? Can you put it on the back? Nobody wants it, right, Aaron? It's the worst trying to remove that goo from a mirror. Yes, and also if you do any like garage sales or thrift stores, they will put a sticker on all the vases, glasses, whatever you want to buy. And it's like so tough to get that stuff off. Yeah. Okay, now DIY floor cleaner. Yes, so last time I was on here, we talked about my $100 laundry room makeover. Yeah. And um, for, I, I honestly can't remember why we had to move the washer and dryer, but we did. And if you move that appliance, you know that the floor underneath is disgusting. It's, gross. it's like under your refrigerator, right? Because you never move it. So you all the lint and whatever is under there. So we have so I'm like, I'm gonna try a different floor cleaner. Oh, were you gonna say something? No, I was gonna say we have a graphic to what what you need for this recipe. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so you need Sal Suds, which is a natural cleaner. And I used this for the first time when I made DIY dish soap, which we've talked about on here before. So I thought I'd give it a try in this floor cleaner. And then you just need, if you want, you can add in a couple essential oils. I just added in a little lemon and pine. Those are both great for cleaning power. It's why you see in lots of cleaning supplies, there's orange or lemon or pine oils added in because they help with grease and grime and all that kind of stuff. So all you really have to do for this floor cleaner is you only need a half teaspoon of the sal suds per gallon and then just add in a couple drops of the essential oil into the sal suds and then pour it into you know whatever cleaning bucket you're going to use. I went behind the washer with a sponge and just did it by hand because it's kind of a tight space, but you can do it with a mop. And I would do this on any sort of flat uh, tile or linoleum. 
I've not tried it on wood, so I'm not sure if it works on there or not, but it no. worked brilliantly and it did not take any like elbow grease. I wasn't like I'm down there scrubbing. It worked super easily. Yeah, you weren't like Christina Crawford or anything. You were, it was just a little, that's a mommy dearest just, reference for just people Just a I nice know. little scrub. Like, like, hey, I just looked at that. That is incredible because, I mean, no offense, that floor was dirty, but, but. It was. It was gross. Yeah. I always am showing the like nastiest I know. parts of my house. On That's your why show. I love you. That's why I love you. <laughs> Aaron, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. These are great tips. For more information, check out Aaron's website, lemons, lavender, and laundry.com. And yes, we will be posting this on the Jason Show Facebook page a little bit later today. So just give us some time. We'll inevitably get an email, but please give us some time. Uh, now that we're done cleaning, Let's drink some wine. Mm -hmm. Wine Diva Leslie Miller gives us a lowdown on clean, natural wine and the buzzwords you should avoid in the liquor store. That and more when we come back. I'm going to go wash our floor now. Come on, Kendall. Welcome back to the old show. Good to be back. Good to have you. Uh, we're all about going green this week for St. Patrick's Day, and that means even your wine can be greener. And that means uh, more environmentally friendly wine. Joining us with some newer terms tossed around in the wine community. Uh, look at her lighting. Leslie Miller, did, did you like hire a lighting crew or something? Look at you. <laughs> no, uh, no, I just, uh, maybe I adjusted the settings maybe on my uh, on my ring light here. You look good. Leslie Miller from Thank Amuse you. Wine. Okay, so we're going to be talking about common questions that you get. And the first one is asking you about clean, natural wine. I got to tell you, Leslie, I, I, I'm a connoisseur, but I, I didn't even know about this. Yeah, I will tell you that because of this new celebrity push for... Cameron Diaz starting her own new wine, uh, Halle Berry talking about it, everybody talking about words like clean and natural and sugar-free. It is a frenzy out there in the way of verbiage and people, I bet you I get 10 emails a day asking, um, how do I decipher this and how do I get through this conversation? Okay, so what is it exactly? And is it good? I mean, is it, or is it just a, is it a PR line? Well, some of it is fake news, Jace. There's a lot of it out there that is, you know, hard to kind of weed through. So number one, the word clean. So we've never used that word in the industry as educators. You know, we're, we're hearing things like clean crafted, never in our, you know, educational terms have we used that. And what that everybody's basically just now finding out that in places like the United States, we can add up to 72 additional things to your wine that have nothing to do with wine itself. And so this was really big news for Cameron Diaz in the last couple of years when she, you know, decided to, you know, delve deep and, and figure out why she was getting headaches and things like that. Uh, so it was huge for her. And she decided to then go go a little bit farther with it and create her own. Now, we, we've also heard the term uh, natural. So a lot of people have been talking about sulfites. There's a lot of fake news around sulfites and kind of what that means. So first off, the sulfites, let's talk about it because it is a natural byproduct of every single fermentation process out there. People are not allergic to sulfites. If you are, you would be close to about 3% of the world's population that is actually allergic to sulfites. You'd also be highly asthmatic. There'd be tons of foods that you wouldn't be able to eat in your own grocer's fridge. So that's one word. Have you heard people say that to you? Oh, I am allergic to sulfites. I get yes. a headache, I don't drink wine. Yes. Yeah, and I would say that people, you know, they talk to me all the time about it. One is, you know, we, we say all the time, okay, one is hydration. You might be getting a headache because you're not drinking enough water when you drink all that wine. But the other thing too, is that they're doing all these studies now on women and finding out that histamines, which are also a compound found in a thicker red grape skin like Cabernet, Shiraz, Zinfandel, is one of those culprits. Histamines, now for me, when I I drink Cabernet and that didn't happen until some of my latter years here, but I do get headachey and sneezy kind of runny eyes and nose and things like that. People started blaming it on tannins 
And I think it was somebody like Dr. Oz that came along and said, you're allergic to tannins. Well, tannin, tannins are a simple compound found in a uh, thick red grape skin next to the compound histamines. And so a lot of times, you know, it's, it's that histamine that's really kind of getting to you in the way of allergens. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about three simple questions to find a wine that's good for you. Yeah, good for you. So one thing that I really focus on too, and, and the conversation around sugar is, you know, is are people adding cane sugar versus the natural sugar in the grape? Do this. Go to the store and ask for a winery that is ten thousand cases is ten thousand cases and under in production. Now that's a small family winery. I will bet you that that small family winery they're not using pesticides, herbicides other things in their wine, concentrate sugars, other things to soup up their wine, but you're getting literally grape to jar. You're getting right yeah. off of the vine, right? And the other thing too is, you know, ask about family owned, community owned, you know, people who are really just doing this because they are real farmers and describe your palate with things like fruit smells, herb smells, or dirt smells that you've really kind of taken a liking to in wine. And the last thing is really just stay away from some of the really, really large, uh, you know, giant factory wines out there. You'll know who they are because, you know, you've kind of seen them everywhere. There's a lot of commercials for them on television, things like that. You know, again, stick to 10 to 10,000 cases and under, um, and you, use that phrase when you go into your retail store and I bet you're always going to end up with literally some of the like the best wines out there for your health. Leslie we have under 30 seconds and I do want to get to this really quick. A mar marketing terms to avoid. You know marketing terms to avoid would be that triple filter keto vegan uh, sugar free and clean crafted. I mean those are things you've got to ask a lot of questions again getting back to like who is the farmer where did this come from tell me about the family if you focus on that you're always going to drink really great pure wine um, and don't get caught up in some of this marketing fluff. I love it this is it's so such good information and by the way that wine cooler you see behind Leslie, Leslie and I are neighbors. I slept in that wine cooler one night. One, uh, <laughs> you did, you I, did. I did. Leslie, thank you so much for more information. <laughs> Head to her website, amusewine.com. We're going to wrap things up when we come back. Back in a moment. Good to be back. Uh, hey, you can stay connected with our show on social media. Just check us out on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, Jason Show TV, very easy to find. No super secret account there. Jason Show TV, to search for that and you'll find us and we appreciate the follow. Okay, you ready for our super mystery question of the day? Our bubblegum goodbye. Here we go, Kendall. Okay. If you could only eat one fast food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh. Well, you don't have to answer now. We'll be right back. Stay with us for that answer. We're going to say goodbye to our audience, too. Kicking off a brand new week. Beautiful shot there from Adam, as always. Let's say goodbye to our audience, uh, my good friends, uh, Kirsten and Karen. Ladies, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. It was fun. Thank you. Nice come back. You, come back. Yes, Karen, I miss you. Come back and see us, both of you. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, time for our bubblegum goodbye. Ladies first, if you could only have one fast food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Um, it's hard. McDonald's breakfast, egg McMuffin, no meat, extra cheese, so good. But I'd still go with Taco John's because of the potato Olay's. Mama. I think is the show over. She took a she took a long time. Yeah, Taco John's is the answer. Uh, Final answer. Taco Bell, without a doubt. You would go the bell over the Johns? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Um, but I could also do Mickey D's for the rest of my life. I could see, I, and they're doing a new, um, they're like supposedly looking into the impossible style of like burgers and meat, and I'm really excited. No, I just give me chicken McNuggets. I just want <laughs> a treasure chest filled with chicken McNuggets. McNuggets. And, and I want, no one has better sweet and sour sauce than McDonald's. I'm sorry. All of the rest of you, sorry, I don't care. It, they have the best. Oh, McChicken with Mac sauce is also a divine sandwich. Fabulous. I'll try that too. Mm -hmm. McDonald's, if you would like to sponsor us, please call Pam <laughs> Silverman. <laughs> Pam Silverman at Fox. Please give her a call, McDonald's.
food folks and fun right here. <laughs> Tomorrow, we're talking plants with Shayla from the Plant Penthouse Trust producer Ted recaps the finale of The Bachelor. Go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. It's good to be back. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody.